Welcome to another episode of the s build. As you can see, the engine is almost done. So the last step is to install our camshafts and get the valve clearance right so everything turns nice and smoothly inside the engine without colliding. Uh, unfortunately I made some mistakes with recording the footage, so this is an earlier take. Um, for now you can see that there are shims in the engine, I put them in there. Um, but I figured out later that it's a lot easier to do the measuring of the valve clearance without the shims in place. So I figured that it would be easier to just leave them out the engine for now. So the next step is to put oil on anything. So everything is a bit lubricated and then um, I put on these valve tappets. So as soon as this is done, the next step is to install the exhaust side camshaft. Um, before you do that, make sure that your engine is in the top dead center. Um, like I said in an earlier episode, there is this indicator down on the crankshaft, so you can put the engine in TDC and everything will be nice. And then you check the manual, because the manual states a correct camshaft position for this um, crankcase. Um, yeah, crankcase position. So if the engine is in TDC and the markings on the crankshaft are correct, you can install the camshafts according to your manual. It's easier to start with the exhaust side because the cam chain tensioner is located on the intake side so the this timing chain cam chain um, will be a lot harder to get onto the camshaft sprocket on the exhaust side don't forget to put extra moly paste onto all the surfaces where the um, camshaft is going to rub on the cylinder head so I'm going to show you um, what it's looking like in the manual. You can pause the video and have a look. So there are numbers and arrows on the on the camshaft sprockets. I think it's quite hard to see on the video, but the importance is that there are two two arrows, one on the uh, intake side and one on the exhaust side, and there should be 15, 15. Uh, chain links in between them so then you have the right chain um, a yeah, number of chain links between them so the chain won't rattle or be, or could be too tight so as you can see what I did now is I mislocated the exhaust um, side a bit so I'm trying to um, get this right now this can be a bit of a hassle to, yeah, to get both camshafts aligned in the correct, um, correct position, and then on top have the proper amount of proper number of um, chain links in between them. But this looks fine now. So next, um, we install these brackets, aluminum brackets with 12 bolts, one for the intake, one for the exhaust side. These clamp down onto the camshafts and yeah hold them in place when the engine is turning these are uh, a bit of a pain to get on because um, while you start clamping them down tightening in a few bolts um, the camshaft or better the valve springs will push the camshaft against these sprockets so you can't fret 
the bolts in by hand, there will always be some resistance from this spring force. And of course, um, you can see those um, those numbers down there. Uh, you start with number one, go to two, and then it's three and four. Those two, this is number three, and the other one is number four, or vice versa. And then you have to go back to the first ones, because they are uh, number five and six as well. So you clamp down those four, and then you do all the other bolts. I think I skipped the ones um, on the um, on the bearings, over the bearings. These are the four bolts to the right, closest to the cam chain. Uh, for this purpose, because, um, like I said, we need to measure the valve clearance as well. And in order to do that, um, or after we've done that, we need to get our shims in there, our final shims, to set the valve clearance. Uh, so we are gonna are going to need to do this whole thing again. And it's a pain to do because it's like 10 bolts. So now, um, since the camshafts are in place and these brackets, I said sprockets earlier, which is wrong. These brackets are in place and clamped down. It's time to measure the valve clearance. You see, I have this feel gauge, um, which I try to push between the actual uh, cam itself and these valve tappets. You just have to remember that right now there are no shims underneath these valve tappets. So you have to add around about half a millimeter of extra shim thickness to the values you're gonna get with these filler gauges. And um, with those two values you should get a, um, a value which is your actual shim thickness you're going to need later on. Um, there are two measuring positions for this SRAT motor. Um, the first is the position, um, the cam position described in the menu when you install the cams. So you are in TDC for the first cylinder and then you have um, half of the valves being ready to measure. And after that you are, uh, you need to crank the engine so you um, you turn the um, crank shaft a full rotation, 360 degrees, uh, which results in a 180 degrees turn for the both camshafts. And then you have the second uh, measuring position where you can then uh, measure the other half of the valves. Um, this is all very good described in this Suzuki workshop manual. And um, I wouldn't do this without the manual. Um, however, the valve clearances for the um, intake side are between 0.1 and 0.2 millimeters, and for the exhaust side, it's 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters of clearance. So I'm getting all the all the values I need, and then uh, remove everything again get the proper shims in, pull it all back together and then measure once more and hopefully it should be good. <laughs> 